Hello everybody. Just want to show you guys, I got two big old bags, trash bags, of zucchini squash. My stepnephew has this huge garden and he goes, well it's almost over, I need help. Can you do something with it? You see this? They're huge. Big mama jamas. Well, anyway, what I'm going to do is, he likes his skin on them, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash them real good and get stuff set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. For a minute, anyway. What I want to do is, I've got this really big bowl. And I'm going to set it over here out of the camera shot. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut the ends off. And they go in the trash. So, I'm going to slice these. Not too thin, not too thick. Maybe between a quarter and a half of an inch. Can you guys see that? Okay. And I'm going to throw them in the bowl. I know this is kind of like watching paint dry, but it's a necessary evil. I'm using the smaller ones for this technique. Then there's also another technique that I'm going to be doing. But these are for the ones that I'm going to fry. So, now remember, these little zucchinis or summer squash or whatever you want to call them are going to be frozen but they're going to be frozen in a batter so all you have to do is pull them out of the freezer warm up the grease and voila you have fried squash pretty cool okay now that you saw me do that I'm going to cut these other ones that I have and I'll be back Okay, well, I'm back again. And I was going to get all this done, and I thought, well, y'all you know, need, need to watch this. Usually, like, if I've got fresh squash or zucchini and I'm fixing to fry it, I'll automatically salt and pepper the zucchini before I dip it in whatever it is I'm going to dip it in. But to freeze it, you want to avoid that step because what the salt does, it actually pulls out the moisture, and it makes it that much harder to freeze it because then it'll just turn to mush. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, I've got cornmeal, sugar, salt, pepper, and some eggs. But the eggs are going to go over here by themselves, so we'll just go ahead and get those cracked open and ready to go. I've got a whole bunch to do, but I'm only going to do a little bit at a time for this video demonstration. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and probably use five eggs because I've got this big old bowl full. May not use it all on this time, but I will on the next one, so it's not that big of a deal. If you're doing a small batch, you know, you can always add some to it. I got my eggs. I'm going to grab my little trusty whisk. I have little um, used containers that I got some meat out of at Walmart a hundred years ago. And I tell you what, I love them. Wash them and just keep going. But what I'm doing is I'm just whisk whisking the eggs up real good. So they're all mixed. get a dry one to do the cornmeal with. Okay, I have another one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour. I have Aunt Jemima. That's just what I use. I'm going to use quite a lot. 
I don't have enough for this trip, so I mean, I'm probably going to have to go to the store and get more to do the rest of these because there is a lot of squash over there. I'm going to lightly put some sugar in there, maybe a quarter of a cup. And what this does is it'll help kind of cure the zucchini, and not only that, it makes it taste a whole lot better. Then I'm going to add my pepper. I don't know, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper and salt. I'm going to put the salt in here. Don't go too crazy with the salt because when you get ready to fry it, you can always salt it after you fry it. And then I'm just going to mix this up. If you prefer any kind of other spices, that's entirely up to you. This is just how I do it. All the way back to my great grandmother. This is how they've done it. So that's how they're going to do it. Now the freezing part's my idea. Because I hated having to stand there for an hour getting everything prepared to cook it. So now you take all that out and you prepare it now and then you just pull it out of the freezer. Well I've got two really big cookie sheets that I'm going to place these on individual. And I think what I'm going to do on this, excuse the cabinet door, <coughs> I'm just going to lightly mist it with, see I'm using Walmart brand of Pam. But anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to take the squash that you just cut, you're going to dip it in your egg batter, egg mixture, and then you're going to place it in the cornmeal. So you have a wet hand and a dry hand. You're going to get all gooey anyway. Then you're just going to lay it on the cookie sheet. I hope y'all can see that. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see my hand. You can see that. And you just keep on a going. I come up with this last year because, like I said, my nephew <coughs> had this garden and it is huge and they have all this extra stuff and he keeps bringing it and bringing it and bringing it and I'm going what the hell am I going to do with all this stuff and I thought well I wonder if I could well you can there's a lot of videos out there that want you to blanch it but that's if you're just going to blanch it and cook it but I, I, I mean and to keep it longer than six months. I told him that they've got to eat this within six months. You know, and you're all excited because you're eating it. During the summer, are you really going to want to eat it in the winter? <laughs> Every once in a while it'll be a good deal. going. <clears throat> oh, I have another little technique too that I do because once you get, I don't know, 10 or 15 slices of the zucchini in there, it leaves an icky mess in your What is that? Cornmeal mixture. And what I've got is this strainer. So you just pull it in there and sip it. And that gets all the I'm not even in frame. Am I in frame? I am now. It gets all the ugly little crumbles out of there. And trust me, those multiply. One little dab of moisture in the cornmeal makes one little bitty teeny weeny piece. And guess what? That little teeny weeny piece grows. So I'll set that over there.
mine a little bit thinner. One reason why I'm doing them thick like this is durability, so they'll last a lot longer. The thin ones you have to use within a couple of weeks because the moisture in the freezer just plays havoc on them. Got, like I said, I've got this batch that I'm going to freeze and the other ones that I'm going to do. He does this uh, stuff. I don't even know how he cooks it, but oh, it's awesome. He'll cut these in circles, but he'll also quarter them and he'll mix it with salt and pepper and I don't know, I guess butter and onions and <clears throat> the yellow squash and he cooks it somehow. I don't know. He doesn't tell me. But it is amazing. I love that stuff. See, nothing really fancy. Just like you would if you were fixing to do it for supper. How you do it to freeze it. I lay them out individual like this so they don't freeze together it's all oh man if that's a booger having to, to tear those apart if they're together because of the moisture when it freezes from the egg not pretty that's the one row one one two two more pieces maybe And that's it. Take it to the freezer, let it freeze. About an hour and a half, two hours, at least three. Come on, until it's as hard as a rock. And I'm going to pause this and I'll be back for the next step. Anyway. <clears throat> burnt nasty cookie sheets. Hey, but they serve a purpose. I just cover them with full and go on. Okay. I'm going to lightly spray my pan. And I'm back again for this different type. What I'm going to do, let me get this stuff out of the way. Look, I made a mess. No way. No big deal. squash this is what I'm going to do I remember remember me telling you the story when he cuts it up and quarters it and puts it with yellow squash I love that stuff so he doesn't know this so this is going to be a surprise for him so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this as well so he'll have options during the winter we are July 23rd, 2014. And I'm getting all my Christmas stuff rounded up, trying to put together. About four months. 
wants to go. Then I'm just going to lay them on this sheet. I guess I'll move this out of the way. Get closer to you guys. Cut them up. And that way, you can make me some stuff. It's also an easy way to get rid of <laughs> the masses of zucchini he's got. Without having to sit here and slice and dice and put everything. I'm going to do with the big ones. I've got how many more have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more big ones and three little ones. So I may use the little ends <coughs> off of these zucchinis to do them fried. So he's got a pretty good mixture. Like I said, the ones with the cornmeal is six months. You can blanch these if you want to, like in a steamer, not dunked in water. They're sitting like in a double boiler, but these are in like a colander, and they're just getting the steam for three minutes. And then put them in a cold water bath for three minutes. Pull them out on some paper towel, dry it, and then bag them up. But, I, I mean, if they stick like this and they're in the freezer, they're going to stick together. So, and even if you've got the steam and stuff on them, I, I just don't know how that does. I mean, I saw some YouTube videos and thought, man, that's just nothing but a bunch of mush when they pull it out of the freezer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and finish doing all this. And I guess when they're frozen, I'll come back and put them in a bag. So I'm like, y'all need to see that, okay? <laughs> well, y'all have a good one until I come back. See you later. Okay, everybody. Well, I'm back. They're frozen. Everything's good to go. What I've done is I got some uh, the gallon size Ziploc baggies and I put the date on it. Because, you know, like I said, they're only good for six months. And there they are. I'm going to get a spatula. They're not supposed to be stuck, but you never know. It could happen, and they're not. That's awesome. So, and you just want to lay them in there. They're frozen. Hear that? And that's it. Thanks for joining me and hope you enjoy it. Y'all have a good one and we'll see y'all later.